Produced in high definition by Fox 50. Viewer discretion is advised. Tonight, fugitives who bait and switch. A party boy, a con artist, and a rapist who gives rides. NC Wanted in high definition starts now. Good evening and welcome to NC Wanted. I'm Gerald Owens. We're continuing our coverage of our Target 20 fugitives eluding authorities across North Carolina. And tonight it's up to you to provide that one tip that could make a difference. Police say this Pakistani businessman walked away with nearly $11 million he stole over the course of five years. In March of 1996, Salman Sharif starts an investment company in Raleigh called Vestron Financial. Claiming expertise in stock trading, Sharif convinces his clients to trust him with their money, promising an unrealistic rate of return. Through word of mouth, Sharif slowly builds the business, bringing in hundreds of investors, many of them friends and family. He does some trading and delivers monthly statements to his clients, showing an increase when he's actually losing money. Sharif covers his tracks by simply moving money between offshore and domestic fund accounts, never actually making a profit, and giving his clients a sense of false hope. So where's our money? Like, when we signed the papers, you probably... When current clients start asking for their money back, he pays them off with the money provided by new investors, also known as a Ponzi scheme. In 1999, Sharif closes his Raleigh office and moves to South Florida. There, he continues to embezzle money under the same company name, Vestron Financial. Sharif's money starts to run out in 2001, and he can no longer pay off his investors. That's when he disappears, taking with him $10.9 million he collected from 350 clients. Sharif likes his lavish lifestyle and uses his stolen fortune to buy sports cars and other luxury items. He's wanted by the FBI for mail fraud, wire fraud, securities fraud, and money laundering. Authorities don't know if Sharif still has family in the Raleigh area, but they say he has ties to Jupiter and Miami, Florida, where his parents live. Sharif is wanted by the FBI for more than 40 counts, including fraud and money laundering. Police believe he could be living in Queens, New York, and using an alias. Sharif is described as 5'8", 175 pounds. He has brown eyes and black hair. There is a reward for information leading to an arrest. If you have any information regarding the whereabouts of Salman Sharif, call us now toll-free at 1-866-43-WANTED or go to ncwanted.com and click Report a Tip. Our next fugitive is a sexual predator who authorities believe will strike again. Robert Lee Best is a repeat offender whose charges include rape and assault dating back to the early 80s. June 12, 2004 in rural Craven County. Robert Lee Best Jr. is a serial sex offender just out of prison. Since his release, he's enjoying his freedom by breaking the law and failing to register as a sex offender in the area. He's also looking for trouble. Just across the street, he locks eyes on an unsuspecting victim. A woman is arguing with her cousin about needing a ride, and Best spots his opportunity. He lures the woman by offering her that ride. Can I give you a ride somewhere? Is that yeah. it? Yeah, who are you? I live right down the street. A stranger's more helpful who, than you. Who are you? As Best drives, the woman notices he's going the wrong way. Take a right turn right here. Good. Should go this way. So he yells and bullies her, foreshadowing his true intentions. Just shut up and let me drive. Shut up! Let me do what I'm doing here! Best quickly finds a secluded area to begin his assault. He overpowers the woman and rapes her. Then, when he's finished, he threatens her life to keep her quiet. You know what? Now I know where you live. Best then drives the victim to her friend's house. Once inside, she defies his threats against her life and tells her friend what happened. They call the police. A call goes out alerting officers to look for the blue Chevy Cavalier that Best is driving. 
An officer spots the car, but Best refuses to pull over. Before he's cornered, Best ditches his car and escapes into the woods. He's been on the run ever since. Best was released from prison just two months before the alleged attack, but failed to register as a sex offender. Authorities have noted his pattern of criminal activity. He'll serve time, then commit another offense, which lands him behind bars. Authorities say his most recent whereabouts may have been the Virginia Beach area. He may also be hiding out near Little Washington or with his family in Craven County. Robert Lee Best is 45 years old, 5'6", and about 160 pounds. He has a small scar between his eyes. If you know where he is, call our tip line at 1-866-43-WANTED or go online to ncwanted.com and click report a tip. Your identity can remain confidential. He became known as the Cary ATM robber. Authorities are still looking for Philip Thomas Scoob Williams, a man they say robbed and shot a woman while she was making a deposit at a Cary bank during lunch hour. Tonight, U.S. Marshals are looking for a man who shot a 51-year-old woman making an ATM deposit in Cary. It happened June 17th during the lunch hour at the Bank of America off Maynard Road. Authorities believe this is the trigger man. 34-year-old Philip Thomas Scoob Williams. They say Williams pulled a gun, shot the woman in the stomach, then ran across the street to Cary Town Center. Authorities say Williams then took off with two accomplices in a red or maroon sedan, possibly a Buick with New York license plates. Just recently in Philadelphia, U.S. Marshals captured the two accomplices, 31-year-old Adam Lyles and 24-year-old Travis Monique Price. Both were extradited back to North Carolina and are being held under $250,000 bond. Williams is a 34-year-old black male. He's 6'4 and weighs about 175 pounds. If you have any information on the whereabouts of Philip Thomas Scoob Williams, please call our toll-free number at 1-866-43-WANTED or go to ncwanted.com and click report a tip. Coming up, an accused mountain murderer escapes prison with alleged help from a guard, plus a jealous ex-boyfriend with a deadly obsession in Moore County. Target 20 fugitives Richard Lynn Bear and Omar Ocampo Figueroa are straight ahead. It's been more than two decades since one of the most notorious fugitives in North Carolina simply walked away from the Wilkes County Jail. His name is Richard Lynn Bear. At the time of his escape in 1985, he was awaiting trial for the death of Sherry Lyle Hart. Since his escape, Bear's mugshots and AIDS progression photos have been a fixture on most wanted lists throughout the country. And reminiscent of the infamous Eric Rudolph, Richard Bear has managed to elude authorities for years. Some say with the help of mountain locals. Others say it's because he's been disguising himself as a woman. They at that point in time put her in the car. Bear ordered uh, Burgess to drive. He drove down the highway and stopped at the edge of the cliff, the jumping off place. Bear took Sherry out of the car and ordered Burgess to drive down the road, turn around, and come back. It's been 23 years since Richard Bear's escape and investigators are still baffled as to how he's eluded them all this time. When he left that jail, he disappeared. We have had only one substantial lead that we can definitively say that it was probably him. Shortly after Bear disappears, the state makes a deal with Jeff Burgess, which allows him to live outside of prison until Bear is caught. Under the agreement, Burgess will testify against Bear and stand trial for his own role in Sherry's murder. But investigators will not give up hope that that day in court will come. We contacted Richard Bear's sister to get her thoughts on her brother's alleged involvement in the death of Sherry Hart. Investigators believe Bear's sister was having a relationship with a jailer and may have persuaded him to unlock Bear's jail cell and just look the other way. 
Bear's sister maintains her brother's innocence and claims not to know where he is. But maybe you do. It's time to finally put Richard Lynn Bear back behind bars. There's at least a $12,000 reward for the person with information leading to his capture. At the time of the murder, Richard Bear was 5'7 to 5'8, about 175 pounds, with brown hair and green eyes. Today he'd be 43 and may look very different. Some say to avoid detection, he's been returning to the Ash County area by dressing as a woman. Anyone with information about Richard Lynn Bear should call us toll free at 1-866-43-WANTED or go to ncwanted.com and click report a tip. You don't have to reveal your identity. This next fugitive is a Mexican native wanted for brutal crimes involving domestic violence. The latest crime was murder, committed in a jealous rage just two days before Christmas. At about 8.30 p.m., December 23, 1999, Sylvia Cuevas drives back from her dinner break to return to her shift at the McDonald's off US-1 in Aberdeen. She's greeted in the parking lot by her fellow co-worker, Angel Martinez. What Sylvia doesn't know is her old boyfriend, Omar Ocampo Figueroa, has been stalking her and watching her in the parking lot. Figueroa grabs some of her old belongings and bullies his way to confront Sylvia. When he forces the box toward her, she throws it back in his face. That's when the two erupt into a yelling and shoving match. Martinez steps in to break up the fight. Take it easy, no. All right, I'm talking to her. No. That's it. Take it easy. Please, right, just leave. Enraged, Figueroa goes back to his car, grabs a knife, and moves in for the kill. No! Oh! 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 Run, Sylvia! Oh! Figueroa grabs her by the hair and stabs her through the chest. Hey, PJ, come on! PJ, come on! Figueroa takes his knife with him, jumps in his car, and speeds away. Shortly after the incident, a Taylortown police officer reported seeing Figueroa in a black two-door Dodge Daytona with license plate number MPR5733. He was driving west on Archie Road and appeared to be heading out of Montgomery County. Omar Ocampa Figueroa is described as 5 foot 7, 210 pounds. He has a tattoo of a fish on his right shoulder, a bear and a heart on his left arm. Authorities say he still has family living in Davis Drive Park in the West End area of Moore County. If you have any information about Omar Ocampo Figueroa, call us right now at 1-866-43-WANTED or go to ncwanted.com and click report a tip. You don't have to give us your identity. Coming up, a dangerous party boy who kidnaps a girlfriend and takes her on a hell ride through downtown Raleigh. And he acted like he wanted to help, then raped and killed once he sweet-talked his way inside. Target 20 fugitives Nathan Randall Pettigrew and Gary Parham Jr. are next. Welcome back to NC Wanted. He may look like the guy next door, but police say you shouldn't go anywhere near him. His name is Nathan Randall Pettigrew, and he has strong ties to the Lewisburg area. He's wanted on a string of charges, including statutory rape, first-degree kidnapping, and assault with a deadly weapon with intent to kill. It's another dog day of summer in Raleigh, but by nightfall, things are about to get even hotter. Police say on the evening of August 2, 2005, Nathan Pettigrew convinces a former girlfriend to pick him up near the intersection of Capitol Boulevard and Old Wake Forest Road. What the woman doesn't know is that Pettigrew has just been indicted on charges of statutory rape and taking indecent liberties with a minor. And things go wrong in a hurry for this woman as Pettigrew pulls a knife and orders her to drive. Now. At this point, police say it's not clear if Pettigrew has a destination in mind or if he's biding time to do something else. You listen to me and don't try anything. What is clear is this is the ride from hell for this 19-year-old hostage. During the ordeal, Pettigrew rages and breaks off her rearview mirror and throws her cell phone out the window. She steals valuables from her purse. It isn't long before Pettigrew and his hostage reach the intersection of Peace and St. Mary Streets. This is where police tell us the woman makes a desperate attempt to escape. But Pettigrew chases her down, forces her back into the vehicle at night point, and orders her to keep driving. Listen, just keep going. In just a few blocks, the woman sees what could be her last chance to be visible in a public place. She steers the vehicle into the parking lot of a P Street convenience store. Pettigrew tries to restrain her, grabbing her blouse and slashing her with his knife. 
Somehow, she manages to pull free and flees inside the store where witnesses are now calling 911. Police tell us this is when Pettigrew gives up and runs away. And this is the last time anyone reports seeing him in the immediate area. Police tell us Pettigrew's party boy appearance allows him to blend in. But they say he loves to hit the nightclubs and has an unusual fetish for strawberry blunts. Pettigrew has a long history of offenses that ties him to three counties, Franklin, Wake, and Vance. His strongest ties are to Franklin County near Youngsville and Lewisburg. Pettigrew is 28 years old, about 5'10 to 5'11, and weighs between 150 and 170 pounds. If you know where he is, call us right now at 1-866-43-WANTED or log on to our website at ncwanted.com and click report a tip. As always, you can remain anonymous. Now let's turn our attention to someone who could be considered tonight's public enemy number one. His name is Gary Parham Jr. and he has ties to the Fayetteville area. He's accused of rape and murder and should be considered very dangerous, especially to women. At six foot one and over 200 pounds, investigators say Gary Parham Jr. is a menacing presence. His MO is to prey on women when they least expect it. It's August 5th, 1998, in an area near Washington, D.C. A 29-year-old woman returns to her apartment happy about her recent engagement. She's the single parent of two children, so things are looking up. But this poor woman has no idea this is the last hour of her life. That's because Parham has just chosen her as his target of opportunity. Okay. After talking his way inside, Parham turns violent oh. and forces her into her bedroom to begin his sexual assault. But this woman has no intentions of ever letting Parham have his way. She fights him with a ferocity that stuns him. The battle moves through the apartment. The woman fights valiantly but Parham stabs her more than 30 times. She finally succumbs to her mortal wounds, and Parham is able to escape without being noticed. Now, fast forward to 2005. Seven years later, Gary Parham Jr. is in prison for an unrelated crime. A sample of his DNA is taken. To the surprise of police, a match comes back, placing Parham at the scene of the woman's murder. It would be her last revenge. By injuring Parham, the brave woman ensured the best witness had remained alive and well, and that would be Parham's own DNA. But just days before the DNA match is confirmed, Parham is released on parole. He gets wind of his good fortune and taunts police by phone, telling them they will never find him. Now he knows he's a marked man. No. Investigators believe he flees the D.C. area to return to his native North Carolina. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Parham is wanted for sexual assaults and drug crimes as far north as Prince George's and Montgomery County in Maryland. Tonight, investigators believe Parham may be hiding out with his mother, who frequently changes her address and is hard to track. Parham has been linked to the Fayetteville area, New Bern, and Winterville. Parham has distinctive green eyes, which should be easy to spot. He tends to wear his hair in cornrows, but may also have an afro. He uses a number of aliases, including Junie, Green Eyes, Gary Brown, Rashawn Parham, or his brother's name, Stephen Parham. He's considered extremely dangerous and must be stopped. If you know anything about him, call our toll-free hotline right now at 1-866-43-WANTED or log on to ncwanted.com and click report a tip. Your identity can remain confidential. On the next NC Wanted. This was a sloppy murder. High school sweethearts, a day from their first wedding anniversary. He goes to work. She has sex and gets murdered. Who killed 19-year-old Linda Meeker of Sampson County? It wasn't a perfect murder, by no means. But it was good enough to get away with it. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yes. NC Wanted, next Saturday night after the 10 o'clock news on Fox 50. Welcome back to NC Wanted. Time to recap tonight's cases. He's a self-proclaimed stock expert, accused of stealing millions from his own family and friends to maintain a lavish lifestyle. Salman Sharif is wanted by the FBI on more than 40 counts, including fraud and money laundering. Salman Sharif is 5'8", weighing 175 pounds with brown eyes and black hair. 
and maybe using an alias. Authorities say it's possible he's living in Queens, New York. There's a reward for information leading to his arrest. Robert Lee Best is 45 years old, 5'6", and about 160 pounds. He has a small scar between his eyes. Authorities say his most recent whereabouts may have been the Virginia Beach area. He may also be hiding out near Little Washington or with his family in Craven County. Philip Thomas Williams is known as the Cary ATM robber. Authorities say he robbed and shot a woman during the lunch hour. Philip Thomas Scoob Williams is a 34-year-old black male. He's 6'4 and weighs about 175 pounds. His last known address is off Rehoboth Church Road in Greensboro. Detectives tell us in 1985, Richard Bear escaped from the Wilkes County Detention Center while awaiting trial for the murder of Sherry Hart. Today, Richard Bear would be 43, but around the time of the murder, he obviously looked much younger. He's described as 5'7 to 5'8, about 175 pounds, with brown hair and green eyes. Authorities say it's possible Bear has altered his appearance, changed his identity, and may even be dressing as a woman. Authorities say in 1999, Omar Ocampo Figueroa murdered his ex-girlfriend just two days before Christmas. It happened at a McDonald's parking lot in Aberdeen. Figueroa was last seen fleeing Montgomery County after the incident. Omar Ocampo Figueroa is about 5'7", 210 pounds. He has a tattoo of a fish on his right shoulder and a bear and a heart on his left arm. Authorities say he still has family living in Davis Drive Park in the West End area of Moore County. He should be considered armed and dangerous. Nathan Randall Pettigrew is the party boy who took a former girlfriend on the ride from hell. Nathan Randall Pettigrew is 28 years old, about 5'10 to 5'11, weighing anywhere from 150 to 170 pounds. He has strong ties to Franklin County and the Lewisburg area. He's known by his distinctive green eyes. U.S. Marshals say Gary Parham Jr. is armed and very dangerous. He's wanted in multiple jurisdictions for rape and first-degree murder. Authorities say he may be hiding out in the Cumberland County area near Fayetteville. Parham is a black male with a light complexion and distinctive green eyes. He's 29 years old, 6'2", and weighs about 250 pounds. If you have information on any of tonight's cases, call us right now toll-free at 1-866-43-WANTED or log on to our website at ncwanted.com and click report a tip. As always, your identity can remain confidential. Join us next week as we profile more unsolved cases and wanted fugitives. Remember, together we can fight to protect the quality of life we hold dear in North Carolina. I'm Gerald Owens. Thanks for watching.